place. Head of Paradiso Security. I apologize for coming over this emergency channel, but we are in need of assistance concerning the large ship in orbit, and we value discretion in this matter. If you are willing and able, please see me as soon as possible at the main security office in Paradiso. Over now. Setting down, everything in the green. Finally be off our ship. Enjoy your stay, knowing you're in our capable hands. Welcome to Paradiso. Jiro Sukiyama at your service. Do you have a security concern, or is there something else I can help you with? Ah, yes, of course. I'm glad you came. As you can imagine, we're in a bit of a predicament. Under normal circumstances, we would not enlist outside help in this manner. But this is a matter we can't afford to worry our guests about. As such, we need to handle this discreetly. Failure on your part to do so could have severe consequences. So, before we proceed, can you swear not to discuss this with anyone else unless explicitly directed to do so? Great. I appreciate it. Not too long ago, a strange and enormous ship appeared in Parima space. It is now locked in orbit around our planet. So far, it doesn't seem to be hostile, but any attempts to communicate with it have been in vain, so we're unsure of the ship's intentions. It is. Whatever's going on, we need to approach this with care. First, see if you have more luck communicating with them. If not, you may have to try boarding. Whatever you do, it's important to remember to seek diplomacy with who or whatever's on board. As soon as you have any more information, report to Oliver Campbell. He's the CEO of Paradiso. All formal decisions will need to go through him. He'll have your pay. Good luck. Should I warm up the engines? How do you think this adventure is going? Great. Fantastic. A moment in time will treasure forever.
alert. Weapons at the ready. You're human. It's just that we weren't expecting to find life, let alone human life out here. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. Imagine being cut off from humankind for that long. How terribly frightening that would be. Perhaps we should greet our guests. Of course. Manners. I'm Captain Diana Brackenridge. This is Security Officer Bomani Reader. Hmm. And this is Dr. Mabuti da Costa, one of our elders. A pleasure to meet you. You've come aboard the Earth colony ship, Constant. Generations ago, we set forth from the planet Earth with the mission of colonizing a new habitable world, in the spirit of our ancestors nearly a millennium ago. Oh. Hopefully it won't inconvenience you too much, but we're in a bind. So you're the only one to approach us, and we really need your help. Our ship has finally completed its near 200-year journey from Earth, only to find our new home seemingly colonized by... Well, we don't know. Communications haven't been successful, so your arrival is fortuitous. Perhaps you'd be willing to act as a middle person between ourselves and... the others. Ah, your question confirms one of our recent theories. It would seem that some form of faster-than-light travel or space-bending technology was invented during our long journey. That would explain why we would find people this far out into space. I guess technology leapfrogged us at some point. Interesting. I can only imagine that our predecessors didn't believe the technology would ever work. And so they made the decision to leave when they did. Well, the short answer is, we didn't. It's a generation ship, which is to say that most of us lived long, happy lives on board and passed our mission down to our children. It was never intended that the original crew would make it to our destination. The goal was always the preservation of the human race, above all else. Though, it would seem that was perhaps a bit <laughs> presumptuous. We're not entirely sure. Our engineers believe it's possible to our technology just isn't compatible with theirs. All we hear when using them to communicate with anyone is a bunch of disturbing noise. It gave me the heebie-jeebies at first. We do. Well, sort of. We saw structures using our surveying equipment. We've also seen the various ships pass us by. Some even seemed to want to communicate, but couldn't. Of course, we had no idea that they were being piloted by other humans. Of course, we know that now. Human or not, we were still unable to communicate our intentions. As soon as we discovered them, we fully expected negotiations would be necessary. Now then, please follow me. There's much to discuss first. We'll speak more on the matter once we reach the bridge. Dr. DaCosta, you may return to your quarters if you wish. Thank you, Captain. I will follow you to the bridge, ma'am. For security purposes. I do not believe we have need to fear our guest, but I'll allow it if you insist. Welcome to the Earth colony ship Constant. In the early 2100s, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, researched a number of scientific scenarios, climate change, asteroid impact, nuclear war, global pandemic, and more. Each scenario showed the likelihood of an extinction-level event to be within 50 years. He fully believed Earth was destined to be rendered uninhabitable. We've always assumed that's what happened. Just so, he gathered the best trouble. and brightest he could find, built the constant, and set a course for this planet here. We were told that it was the largest, most advanced ship ever constructed on Earth at the time. If you can believe, entire generations have been born, lived, and died on this ship. It really goes to show that there are no limits to human ingenuity and perseverance. Careful waving that fancy gun around. We don't need to see what it can do. Never seen a ship like yours before. Then again, I haven't seen any ships before you arrived. 
So, here we are. I have to say, with technology this outdated, I'm amazed this vessel is able to navigate at all. It's almost like walking through a museum. No matter the outcome, I won't let my crew down. I think I'm coming up on six years now. I was only a teenager when my father died, passing command of the ship to me, as is tradition. Because of that, I've had to sort of learn as I go along, instead of taking years of study and apprenticeship under the prior captain. I think some people on the ship resent me for not having the level of experience as my predecessors. But at the same time, without my command, we likely wouldn't have made it here so quickly. A bit frazzled, as you can imagine. People are anxious about discovering that we're not alone, and also worried about what will come to pass. While we hope we can work out a deal with the people on the surface, they seem reluctant to reach out, so there's no telling what will come of that. I do know that we can't afford to stay here in orbit forever. The ship was built to sustain us for many years with backup provisions just in case, but even that will come to an end eventually. Mm, difficult is the wrong word. It can be both challenging at times and also exciting. Our mission was to rebuild humanity on a distant world, believing that we were Earth's last hope. To think that while there has always been a bracken ridge in the captain's chair, that I am the one to finally oversee our journey's end is truly exhilarating. But with this stumbling block in our path, at this final moment, I fear tough choices will need to be made. Well, as I mentioned, we've been unsuccessful in communications with anyone up until you arrived, though not for lack of trying. But since you're asking, maybe you'd be willing to be a sort of diplomat between us and them as we attempt to resolve our situation. Does that sound agreeable to you? We suspect that our equipment is woefully obsolete compared to whatever you all have now. In all honesty, we never expected to need to communicate with anyone, so our comms aren't particularly robust. That limits our options. We even attempted communicating with lights and sounds, something we saw in an old movie, but I don't believe they picked up on it. If anything, it may have inadvertently alarmed them. Ah, oh, so they have a name, Paradiso. And it sounds promising that they sent you here to speak with us. You see, we intended to settle here, but we assume that they intend to defend their claim given their presence here. We'd like you to go speak to them on our behalf and help us negotiate a solution, preferably one that favors us. Based on the data our ancestors had when they launched this endeavor, it was determined that this was the perfect planet for us. Even if we had another viable candidate planet, we lack the resources to get there. And as you know, it took us 200 years to get here. Our people have no desire to go back to drifting the stars so their children's children can possibly settle on an inferior planet. When we left Earth, there were no claims to planets this far out into space. We had assumed that we were the only ones attempting a generational journey such as this, meaning that there would be no need for a formal claims process. Regardless, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, did manage to file a charter for this planet's first colony to be named New Jamestown. According to his records, no one took it seriously when he filed it, so likely it was either ignored or the records were lost to the ages. Given humanity's lack of interest in colonizing the far reaches of space at the time, it shouldn't have been a problem, but again, here we are now. Excellent. Make no mistake, this is our planet, and we intend for them to see this our way. So, speak with their leadership and see if you can negotiate a solution on our behalf. Preferably, get them to see things our way. Report back to me and let me know what they say, and we'll go from there. We thought about it, but it simply won't do. I need to think about the distant future of our people. Sure, our first settlement may be small, but our predecessors dreamt of our new civilization spreading across the globe. That would be difficult if someone else plans to do the same. 
While we're not completely close to the idea of sharing, it's much easier if we have complete domain over this world. I'm serious. We have a rightful claim to this land, and I intend to fight for it. But as you're currently our only hope, perhaps you'll honor my request and give it your all, for the sake of some very weary travelers who have come a very long way to be here. Thank you. Mr. Tofik, I am aware that this is your eighth visit to our resort. Your repeat patronage is much appreciated. Is there any assistance I may offer you today? Actually, a question. Usually, when I come here, the shuttle takes a certain route, showing me the beauty of this world. But this time, our entries seem to take uh, longer, and we pass by a lot more open water. Was there something wrong with our normal flight path? I heard the rumors of a ship in orbit. Please allow me to apologize for this inconvenience. This alternate entry was required due to a meteor shower affecting the usual descent route. Nothing to worry about. To make up for this, allow me to credit your account with a 15% discount on spa amenities. Once again, we are dreadfully sorry. It's okay, Peter. I know you're programmed to be overly Paradiso is absolutely beautiful. Can you possibly imagine a more tranquil place for a resort? Hope you're staying safe out there. Hello. Not to be a downer. But this place is almost too perfect, right? This is probably the best vacation I've ever taken. Excuse me, you can't just waltz in there. Do you have an appointment? There's something I need to talk to you about. Oh, you're the one they're waiting for then. Do you need anything else from me before you meet with the board? <laughs> what I could tell you would get me in a lot of trouble. Most of them are typical sea level execs. I doubt you even need to use your imagination for that. The ones that show up to work day to day, at least. I swear, I've never even met some of them, because they chill at their own private secluded beach homes all the time. Anyway, be smart around Oliver. He's got a way of getting what he wants without you realizing it. And that's all I'll say. People were a little freaked out around here, understandably. It looks so different, and it's so massive. We honestly thought we were under attack by an unknown entity. But then, nothing happened. It just stayed there. No one could communicate with it. And we've been very careful not to alert the resort guests. The board believed it would be... bad for business. Sure. Have fun in the shark tank. And don't worry, even they call it that. I just feel that we should be focusing on the natural beauty of this planet, not our amenities. There are millions of planets out there. People can go to any one of them. The resort facilities are precisely what we bring to the table. Heck, <laughs> it's the only thing we've really got to offer. Ah, I don't want to risk us coming off as just another artificial, shady, trash fiddle dump like Neon. That's not who we are. We've got something special here. We should embrace that. The Lom's right. Thank you. I... We don't want to compete with Neon. Bayou's ruthless. He'll do anything he can to eliminate the competition. We don't need that kind of trouble. That being said, I think there's a middle ground. Maybe build up the beachfront in a boardwalk amusement park. I've had this idea to build artificial hot springs, that sort of thing. <sighs> Sounds good. 
I'll look into what that will cost us, and we can circle back around to this. We'll make some time for you, but keep it quick, yeah? I am. And you must be the... diplomat Jiro told me about. Welcome, welcome. Normally I'd offer you an all-inclusive stay at our resort before we spoke. But given these circumstances, I'm gonna cut to the chase. We've got our friends, the aliens, up there causing all sorts of problems for our resort. You like that? The marketing team came up with it. The thought is, if we can't get rid of them, it might actually attract more tourism. Come see the aliens! <laughs> We run a premier resort getaway here. We can't have our guests concocting stories about some bodgy old ship hanging around up there. As it is, we've had to reroute our luxury liners around the other side of the planet on entry so no one sees it. It's bad for business. We need to nip this in the bud and take care of it before the tourists catch on and cause a scene. You'd be surprised what people fall for. Locally sourced island fruit essences, for instance. It's just the same old fruits brought over from Earth ages ago, but we get nearly ten times a market for them. But you're right, no one's gonna buy aliens. Remind me to fire the marketing team. So, tell me, what's the actual deal with this massive eyesore of a ship, besides scaring people away? Well, that's something. Shame we can't just tell them kindly to bugger off. Something tells me that's not gonna work. Now, tell me, what are we going to do about it? Give me some proposals, people. I need something to work with here. Hmm. We could offer to resettle them here. There's more than enough space. They could stay here. Temporarily. But it'll cost them. Quite a bit, too. They'd need to work off all their debts before being allowed to leave. Ah, uh, maybe not. What if we help them get out of here? Outfit their ship with a grab drive so they can find a new home. We could even lend our engineers to help and give their captain an updated star map. What do you think? Sounds costly. We can't absorb that cost, and it's unlikely they even have compatible currency, let alone enough for the transaction. Someone else would have to foot the bill. Oh, I swear this would be a lot easier if they ceased to exist entirely. Anyway, Seema's got the right idea. Either works for me. Just tell me what you want to do. We own this planet. They don't. Here at Paradiso, we don't like leaving things to chance. Who knows what these people will do with their land? Imagine the landscaping disasters they might come up with. And how that might mar the satellite imagery of the planet in our brochures. No, much better to assimilate them into our culture if they come here to live, rather than leave it to chance. Well, absurd or not, that's our official stance. I make the decisions that are best for our entire group. You don't. We operate outside of the Free Stars and the UC, partially because we don't want anyone else meddling in our affairs. And we'd rather not draw attention to it, as I've mentioned. It could be bad for business. We'd much rather settle this independently. I'm not suggesting anything. Other than it would make our lives so much easier if that ship ceased existing. Make of that what you will. It's not our responsibility to bear the brunt of that cost. We're being more than generous by offering the use of our engineering team to help install it. A custom grave drive can't come cheap, and I assume they have neither the monetary means nor the connections to get a hold of that kind of technology. That leaves the only other party in this negotiation. You. Oh, I need to say that specifically. This would be a mutual contract for room and board in exchange for services rendered. 
Of course, there's no telling how long this arrangement will last, given the substantial costs we'd need to take on in order to accommodate them here, including their continued room and board. But this may save the resort on operating costs in the long term, as we'd be able to let go of some of our current paid staff. <laughs> and which proposal will you be taking to the good captain? I assume there's a captain. They'd be hard-pressed to defend their claim in any courts. Our charter goes back years. It was registered with both the UC and Free Star Collective, per the Centaurus Proclamation. We may be outside the settled systems, but that charter's official as can be. I'm sorry, but you're going to need to be the one to break the news to them that they need to make a compromise or leave. Ah, good on you. You want to see a man named Benny St. James over at Hope Tech. He's the best in the business. If anyone can retrofit a 200-year-old ship with a modern grab drive, it'd be him. We'll coordinate our engineering team with his when you return. Though you may have to help the Constance engineers prepare for it on their end. Good luck. I know this was a difficult decision. But if it's any consolation, I think you've made the right choice. Compared to the destruction of their vessel and relegating them to a life of servitude, I'd say this is the best chance they've got. Right. On behalf of the Paradiso Group, we appreciate your help. When you have a moment... With a name I'd like Paradiso, it. the marketing for this place writes itself. Thanks for taking the time to talk. I wanted to ask you about the artifact you found on Bectera. When you pulled it from the rock, held it in your hands for the first time, how did you feel? No, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts? Hmm, that's an interesting reaction. But I suppose it shouldn't surprise me. When dealing with the artifacts, common sense tends to go right out the window. Honestly, I wasn't sure how you'd react. Some people would consider what you went through a deeply personal experience. Oh, well, uh, I, uh, I enjoy hearing about them. <laughs> Professionally, of course. Either way, um, we need all the help we can get. The artifacts are so different. So alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. Well, judging from the fact that both you and Barrett claim to have heard music, I've made the leap that the artifact was reaching out. Music composition might not consist of words and sentences, but I'll be damned if that isn't an attempt at language. Agreed. Unfortunately, there's no way that I know of to reply. And believe me, I've been trying to gather data on the damn things for years. Frustrating? No. Bewildering? Yes. It would be... Oh, well, an explorer's dream to solve a mystery like this. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk and for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time.
was fun. Now what? This is Freestar Collective Space. Hold while we scan your ship. Swing by Hope Tech Star Yard and see if they have anything interesting for sale. I don't want to hear any complaints. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, here. This is such a I remember meeting Ron Hope once. Idealistic and perhaps a bit of a dreamer. Two people wanted to talk to me. Sure, that sounds like me. What can I do for you? I'm a little busy, but uh, I think I could spare some time. Oh, you should have just said that. Of course I can help you. Oliver sent a courier ahead of you. I did some research on ships from that era, and I have a decent idea what we're dealing with. So grab drives didn't really take off until after the ship was built. But I've got access to an ancient grav drive that looks like it could be compatible. With some minor adjustments. It's in good shape, too. Parts not cheap, though. Neither is the labor. Just pay the combined cost of parts and labor and it's yours. It's a pretty big ask given how rare these old grab drives are. Maybe it is selfish of me to demand such a price. Tell you what, sounds like this is for a good cause. While I can't give you the part for free, I won't charge you for the work. You're darn right it is. I'll get to work on it right away. I recommend you go back to the ship and ask the captain to prepare for its retrofit. Standard stuff. I'm sure they have an engineer on board to help. We'll send the part along when it's ready and install it with the help of Oliver's people. Pleasure working with you. valuables. If you can't protect your own, you don't belong here. Strict rules are out here. They're strict for a reason. These are exciting times, aren't they? <laughs> 
I was hoping to talk to our visitor from outer space, and here you are! Welcome, welcome! I have a million burning questions, but I won't overwhelm you. There will be plenty of time for that later. Please, indulge me just a couple. How did you do it? Did humanity finally discover faster than light travel and eclipse our poor old ship? Ah, I knew it. It's, it's incredible. I read about this technology in our archives from Earth, but it was only theoretical back then. Amazing! I'll have to learn more. Oh, I've got so many questions, but I'm being rude. I haven't even given you my name. Chief Engineer Kazemi. But you can call me Amin. And, I might add, I'm one of the reasons we're still floating out here today. Yes, of course! Anything for my new friend. Ah, great question. I do not know for sure, but I can venture a guess. All of the reading I've done on the matter suggests that at the time, there was uncertainty that the technology would ever work, or if it did, that it would work at the scale we needed. So, I trust they made the decision to strike out when they did, fully believing it was the only way. What grab drive? <laughs> Just joking with you. The Paradiso engineers filled me in. Okay, let's see what we need to do. Hmm. All right. This will be fun. And hopefully there will be no explosions in the process. I have just received word that the drive is here. Ready to get to work? Great, great, great! There are three preparations I need you to help me make while I set things up on my end. First thing I need you to do is reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Then, turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Last, you'll need to decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Got it? Let's hop to it! Looks like everything is good to go on both your end and mine. Uh, can you go inform the captain while they're finishing the installation? Never seen a ship like yours before. We've got strict rules around here. Now that you're here, I can finally give my crew a chance at a new life. Well, well. It would appear we have the means to go nearly anywhere now, thanks to you. The engineers even upgraded our communications equipment so we can speak with passing ships. Turns out it was a pretty easy fix. Thank you again for all you've done. We don't yet know. But we did receive a star map from the Paradiso engineers. I suppose we'll just chart a course for other suitable habitable worlds until we find one that matches the quality of Paradiso. Um, uh, Purima too, here. Without you, we'd most likely be stuck. But you went above and beyond. 
I'll make sure people tell tales of your generosity for as long as our society lives. I don't know if we can ever fully repay you. Thank you again. Just stay out of trouble. <laughs>